Good morning. Today is the 17th day of May in this 2022nd year of our Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I'm home in Myrtle Beach uh, after a, a worldwide, it seemed like a worldwide month-long tour of uh, parts of Europe that we've never been to. I'm going to recount a little bit of that travel with you uh, over the course of maybe the next few weeks. Uh, today, though, we have blue skies and we had a nice rain shower. I understand there hasn't been much rain here in South Carolina, but there's been a deluge of rain elsewhere. Uh, so we're thankful for the sunshine and a, a nice crisp morning, a day to look forward to in getting our lives back into the rhythm and routine of what life is called. Um, we um, share these words from Paul's epistle in the fifth chapter. <clears throat> Therefore, since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. In this letter, Martin Luther writes, the Apostle speaks as one who is extremely happy and full of joy. In the entire scripture, there is scarcely another text like this chapter, scarcely one so expressive, for it describes the grace and mercy of God in the clearest possible manner, telling us what it is like and how great it is for us. Note how Paul begins placing the spiritual peace with God only after righteousness has preceded it. For first, he says, since we have been justified through faith, and then we have peace. But the perversity of men seeks peace before righteousness, and for this reason they do not find peace. Thus the apostle creates a very fine antithesis in these words, namely, the righteous man has peace with God, but affliction with the world, because he lives in the Spirit. The unrighteous man has peace with the world, but affliction and tribulation with God, because he lives in the flesh. But as the scripture is eternal, so also will be the peace of the righteous man and the tribulation of the unrighteous. And as the flesh is temporal, so will be the tribulation of the righteous and the peace of the unrighteous. From the lectures on Romans 15, 15, 15, 16 by Martin Luther. One of our stops that for me was perhaps greatly anticipated because of my interest in the antiquities of of Europe and of the Roman and Greek empires was Rome itself, Roma. Benita and I that day uh, had walked a good bit around the Roman uh, Colosseum. We'd been dropped off at our second uh, place on our excursion, uh, the People's Square, where there was a, a beautiful church there, and uh, we continued to walk to what we anticipated as being something spectacular, having never seen it, and that would be the Spanish Steps. Now, on my trip early on in our first cruise throughout Greece, I tripped and fell and injured my knee with a massive hematoma, swelling up my left leg and relegating me to tour the rest of Europe on crutches. I didn't let that hold me back. I have that kind of tenacity. I didn't want to be a disappointment to Vanita and her experience. So we walked on as best as we were able over cobbles and up hills and down narrow lanes and uh, took little pauses, got a little bit separated from time to time at the back of the pack with uh, excursions and tour directors. But nonetheless, we completed it and uh, and that was all good. On this particular afternoon, we had uh, made that trek down this long street to where we knew the Spanish steps would be in a little plaza down at the end. We were just beat. We had had a long walk from the bus just to get to our meat place where we would later 
gather and get back on the bus and proceed then to the Vatican. And that was another experience of great worth I'll share with you another day. And about halfway down that street, we needed to stop. I needed the restroom. That's a whole other issue for me, but uh, nonetheless, I found a church, and it was Church of the All Saints in Rome of the Anglican Church, the Episcopal Church. We went inside, and immediately the cool air of this great stone church hit us, and we looked about to find where the restroom might be. Not seeing that, a young woman came walking out to us with a pamphlet in hand, and we proceeded up the steps and realized that we were in the middle of a brief afternoon worship service. The rector was garbed in his chasuble for Easter. He stood behind the altar. He was in the middle of his sermon. We took a seat quietly among a great throng of people, about a total of seven of us, <clears throat> who were worshiping that day. Church was uh, simple, not at all elaborate like many of the great basilicas and cathedrals, but it was there to give respite to two weary travelers. And I like to think of the church as being that which gives us respite in the journeys of life, where we are conflicted by life in the flesh and do not find peace, as Paul would say to the Romans, unless there is righteous behavior and righteousness. And so we sat and we listened and we were kind of included in the sermon as he called upon me, that gray-beard man sitting back there and made a couple of comments about my life, not knowing me, um, and working us and including us in the whole experience. I never thought that what would happen next to we would ever happen. We we're in the midst of Rome, that great city of an empire of over 500 years, and there we communed. In the city where the Apostle Paul had been killed, beheaded, where Peter had been the bishop for a while of the struggling little church. And here we found the familiarity of liturgy, the peace and the quiet, a COVID sharing of the peace, a good message from the rector, and the presence of Christ in bread and wine. Service ended, we spoke to the rector, fine man, pastor from, uh, grew up in Canada, well-spoken in English. We met his bishop, the bishop of all of the area of Italy for the Anglican Church who was worshiping there and was there for a meeting with his, his pastor, and a couple of other Episcopal priests and two women, Danita and I. It was the community of faith, gathered as small as we might be, in the midst of that great city and that throng where we weren't finding a lot of peace that day. As we continued on, we left the church, found the Spanish steps, not real impressive, leading up to a church. I was not able to climb them, but got my a picture and uh, proceeded on back down the, the lane. Had a slice of pizza in Rome, which, uh, was okay, but, you know, it was pizza, and made it back to the group into plenty of time. Uh, there are other things that happened and things I'll share with you that are, were surprises and things that were unexpected, but uh, I'd just like you to think that, one, what brings you peace? To us, in the midst of a physical struggle for me, tiredness for Vanita, weariness from long journeys over away from home and family. Peace and solace was found in word, in sacrament, and I trust that that is the case for many of you. And join me in prayer. Heavenly Father, I give you thanks for the blessings of time to journey and travel and be blessed by the wonders of this great and vast world the beauty of countryside and cities that emulates very much what we find here in our own blessed land. People who helped us greatly, 
the courtesy and the, the kindness of those who attended to me as I was struggling with walking and with being present in each moment of the day. I'm grateful for the loving care that Benita rendered and helped me along the way. I'm thankful for this day, a blessed day, to return to the normalcy of life and those things that sustain us, family and home and loved ones and your, your blessed word. And we pray, O oh Lord, that we might find peace in many and varied ways. We still pray, especially for the people of the Ukraine that suffer so gravely over these months past and continue to do so under the onslaught of Russian reign and terror, terrorism. We pray an end to this aggression and a return to some sense of normalcy and opportunity to rebuild a land and a nation. Bring solace to those that grieve, be of help to each that we would remember in the silence of this moment. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine on you, to be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. This day and forevermore. Amen.